Hello, I'm Eud Asya, and I would like to introduce to you the video entitled The Zonola Challenge, History and Evolution. This is not just a chronological review of the surgical techniques and the various devices that were developed to manage some of the most complicated challenges in cataract surgery. This is a personal 30-year journey of the author, Dr. Robert Osher, who shares with us his own personal perspective of the Zonal Law Challenge. Dr. Osher was personally involved in the development and introduction of many of the technologies now being recognized by most surgeons in the world. Those include slow motion phacomossification, synthetic zonals, capsule attention rings, and capsule retractors and clips. The road to success was sometimes bumpy. Innovations were occasionally rejected by conservative surgeons. However, eventually, as Dr. Osho says in this video, we have conquered the loose lens. Dr. Charles Kelman, the father of phaco emulsification, made it very clear that a major contraindication to this procedure was the loose lens. In the early 1980s, a young and naive surgeon, me, could not understand why the phaco machines offered only maximum and minimum. And every American company rejected my idea to allow infinite surgeon control of parameters. I was able to find a small Italian company, Opticon, which took a gamble by developing surgeon-controlled ultrasound, aspiration rate, and vacuum, introducing the Facatron Gold, which in combination with the first motorized infusion pole, led to a new operation, slow motion phacoemulsification. I believe the idea would have died a slow motion death had Dr. Kelman himself not offered his written and vocal support of this new approach. Surgeon control allowed us to challenge each of the five contraindications, the mature lens, the small pupil, the shallow chamber, the compromised cornea, and last but not least, the loose lens. After presenting the first series of loose lenses emulsified by FACO at the AIOIS meeting in 1986, other surgeons like Dr. Jerry Freeman sent videos of their successful cases which served to neutralize the harsh criticism from colleagues calling me dangerous and negligent. When the zonular support was severely damaged, I would place one haptic in the bag and suture the other haptic through the sulcus, emphasizing that this was an investigational approach with unproven results. Then, in 1993, I was fortunate to be in Nuremberg when Drs. Ulrich Legler and Bern Weichel presented their landmark video introducing the capsular tension ring for zonular instability. Morcher, the tiny IOL company in Stuttgart, Germany, gave me some sterile samples to smuggle back into the United States, where I was able to expand and stabilize the loose capsular bag with the CTR, while placing the lens in the ciliary sulcus. I even placed sutures through the capsular bag, incorporating the ring, introducing the idea of creating synthetic zonules. Later that year, my brilliant young fellow, Dr. Robert Sioni, implanted both the capsular tension ring and the intraocular lens into the capsular bag. Once all the cortical material has been removed, a larger diameter all PMMA intraocular lens is placed into the capsular bag. The first such operation in America. It didn't take long for Dr. Sioni to realize that a modification was necessary in order to recenter and permanently fixate the loose capsular bag, which led to the debut of the Morcher 
Sioni Ring in 1997. Following this milestone idea, videos began to appear from cutting-edge surgeons around the world, like Dr. Vladimir Pfeiffer from Slovenia and from pediatric surgeon Dr. Charlotta Zetterstrom from Sweden. The loose lens captured the imagination of innovative surgeons like Dr. Ike Ahmed from Canada, who introduced the capsular segments, and Israeli surgeon Dr. Ehud Asiya, who designed the capsular anchor. New injectors were developed, which led to the design of novel devices like the Malugan ring from Russia and the scalloped appearing Henderson CTR to facilitate cortical removal. Parallel innovation was occurring for stabilizing the capsular bag during the procedure, when Dr. Richard McCool popularized capsule retractors, which were subsequently modified by Dr. Tadahiko Kazawa in Japan to provide additional equatorial support. Larry Lax, president of MST, introduced a double-stranded capsular support system which Dr. David Chang further improved by closing the distal loop to prevent inadvertent CTR entrapment. Suture techniques were also being developed for advancing the eyelet by Drs. Andreas Fromm and Burkhardt Dick from Germany in 2001, and later championed by Dr. Timothy Page in the United States. The late Dr. Roger Steinert improved the lasso suture which I had introduced in the 1980s by demonstrating how to dock the needles when refixating the late dislocated capsular bag lens complex in patients with pseudo-exfoliation. Dr. Michael Hader eliminated the Gore-Tex spaghetti, simplifying the suturing technique by direct suture retrieval through the pars plana. Every year, we continue to see new devices from around the world like the double-flanged technique from Dr. Sergio Canabrava in Brazil, the Embody device, the paperclip capsular stabilizer from Dr. Susan Jacob in India, and the conversion of the transient capsular retractors to a permanent solution from Dr. Rekas in Poland. As I enter my 70s, I look back with a sense of appreciation for each of these brilliant contributions from so many surgeons. I was in awe when Dr. Yuri Kondratenko from Ukraine performed a capsular bag transplant, and I was mesmerized watching Dr. Fernando Gonzalez del Valle and his group from Spain harvest a capsular bag from a cadaver eye, which was then used to support the intraocular lens in an aphakic patient. How far we've come, and how clearly I recall a young surgeon's anguish being accused of malpractice when introducing synthetic zonules, the lasso suture, and surgeon-controlled parameters leading to the birth of slow-motion FACO more than 30 years ago. We have, in fact, conquered the loose lens, and I am grateful to have played a small role in this ophthalmic surgical triumph. Thank you.